You're watching Page Key Solutions, and today we're kicking off our quick Python series. This will be a series of snippets for you to learn as much about Python in as short time as possible. Our first topic is loops, our first loop, and getting our feet wet with some data types. We'll follow the following learning checklist for this series. We'll start out with the why. Why are we learning this? How is it useful? Number two, the what. What are we actually building? What's the end product of this video? And finally, the how. How can you do it line by line and eventually apply it to your own projects? First and foremost, the why for this one is pretty straightforward. We want to see the most basic way that we can demonstrate the power of Python because Python packs a lot of power and you don't have to know much to flex that power. Loops are easy and they'll give you an idea of the types of things that you can start doing with very little code. Also data types, we'll talk about those briefly. You're going to need to know that because it's everywhere. To even use the language, you're making use of data types. It's just basic knowledge. So we'll throw that in there too. Bottom line is you'll use this all the time. So it's a good place to start. Next up is the what. What are we going to build? How's it going to look when we run our script? If we do python our script.py, this is the output. Nothing too impressive, but if you examine it carefully, you can tell that there's some looping going on in the background. We're not writing every single one of these lines ourselves. Instead, loops are doing the heavy lifting for us. So we have something quick at the top that's fun and easy if you want to try it out, and then we go over data structures and print each of those at the bottom. Let's jump into the code to figure out the how of how we did this and how it can be applied to future projects. If you want to try out the code yourself from this, I'd absolutely suggest go check out the repository on my GitHub, Stephen Gray slash education. The link is in the description and you can go through the code line by line in your browser. You can also clone the repository so that you can actually run it on your computer without copying and pasting anything. Finally, we're at the how. So if you've never looked at a single line of Python before, this might look a little scary, but bear with me. You just need to know two or three things and you can jump right in. First of all, you're probably wondering what that first line is. You don't really have to worry about it. You can copy that verbatim every time. It's actually called a shebang line, if I recall. It's telling your computer, if you're a Linux system, to use Python instead of whatever the shell is, bash or whatever. Not really important. If you forget it, it's okay, but it's nice to be able to run a program with dot slash. So that's all that is. After that, you have a print statement. In Python 3, you always need the parentheses, but it's really simple to print something to the screen. You just type print, parentheses, and then a string. You can also put variables in here. We'll get to that in a second. Next, we define a list, and it just has strings that describe animals. And we're going to do our for loop. Here's where the heavy lifting of Python comes in. Instead of writing those out each time, we're going to say for element in my quick list, which is the name of the list variable, we are going to execute the next few lines, everything that's indented. Python is based on indentation, so you have to be careful to get your white space right. You can't mix up tabs and spaces either. That'll bite you. Anyway, it just prints, here's a great pet, and then it prints elem. In this case, elem or element represents whichever element you're currently on in that list. So the first time this for loop runs through, the first iteration of the loop, lm is set to cat, and then it prints those two lines, assuming lm is cat. Then it goes through again, this time dog is lm, and then it does it again and again until we get to the end of the list. In this case, it only runs two more times, but imagine if that list were a thousand lines long or a thousand elements in that list, you don't wanna print all those out yourself. You wanna let Python do it for you. You don't wanna to have to explicitly say every time you wanna print something. So that's pretty cool. After that, I printed a bunch of dashes. This is kind of me marking off, hey, you don't have to do all the typing below the line if you don't want to. Really, the top part is what I want you to try out on your own, tweak that code, and have some fun with it. With that said, we can go below the line and see what kind of data types we have in Python available out of the box. Strings. We've already gone over that. It's just a bunch of characters put together. You have numeric types. You have integer, which has no decimal places. You have a float value, which does have decimal places, like pi there. And there's even complex numbers, if you remember that. For me, it's back in high school the last time I had to use those. But if you're a scientist, hey, maybe you need those all the time. So more power to you. Below that, we have sequence types. We've already used a list. There's also something known as a tuple. We won't talk too much about it right now, but just know it's immutable it's ordered and it's a little collection there. So that could be, you know, X, Y coordinates. It could be latitude, longitude, any pairing, and it could be any number of 
elements. It's not a double, it's not a triple, it's a tuple. I don't know if that's how the name actually originates, but you can have one comma, two comma, three comma, four in those parentheses and that makes it a tuple. Unlike a list, you can't change those values once you've defined them. Beyond that, you have a dict or dictionary. This allows you to store things as keys and values. So note, if you wanted to look up name under this dictionary value, it would return Jim. The key is name. When you ask for the name, it gives you the value. And I listed the other primitive types, which we're not gonna go over, they're not that common, or you know, I just don't feel like talking about them. Bool is pretty important, that's just true or false. Other than that, we'll skip the others. So at the bottom there, we define all of my data, and it's a variable, and it's containing all these other variables that we've defined as examples of data structures. So you put in the string, you put in the int, the float, the complex number, the other list, the tuple, and the dict, and they're all contained in this list that we're storing under the name all of my data. And now we're gonna do our second for loop. So as a refresher, we're gonna do for lm, and I used elem again, but this can be any name you use to represent the current element in, and then the name of the list. And then we're just going to print, here's a bit of data for you, comma, lm. And if you'll notice in the output, it puts them on the same line. Why? Because instead of having two separate print statements, we put them all in one line there. We have, here's my list of data for you, comma, the next thing that we wanna print out on the same line. And then at the end, we just print, that's it. Like the code said, that is it for this first lesson of Quick Python with Page Key Solutions. Hope you liked it, hope you learned something. If you have questions or comments, please let me know, however you want. Just get in touch. See you for Quick Python 2.